hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel this was a highly requested video after my story of how i found out i was pregnant so let's get straight to the story so if you don't already realize i just real talk and i really like to talk so when i was like 14 15 like just before mateo i used to real talk like non-stop like i never used to shut up at all and i mean now i like to talk yeah but i just only talk to like selective people like if one of you meet me in person i would be so quiet <laughs> and shy because you know anxiety you know whatever so yeah that has changed but back then a I now meet you and I telling you my whole life story and I was crazy so when I was like 15 I knew a lot of people I had a lot of friends and there's this guy that I used to talk to and he was my boyfriend or anything it wasn't like anything sexual between us it was just my friend and when I did nasties I called him and I was like telling him about the whole thing when it happened where it happened how it was every single thing oh and he was i think yeah he was friends with the guy as well so i real blab in my mouth i going on and on and on i stand up in the gallery it was like we we talk from like four something to like six because i remember it getting dark i talk and talk and talk and we cackalacking on the phone laughing that a i mm -mm. and all this time you know i thinking everybody's sleeping my mother's sleeping and i was in the gallery and i were all talking over here so then now uh, conversation there and i say all right so i'll whatever hang up the phone walking back inside i see my mother watching me i like mm. You up since when and i was like Ugh. okay didn't take it on i was like maybe she didn't hear anything going to my room and then i was like waiting for her to come she didn't come so i did scroll on my phone then i see miss mom come in my room and stand up there i was like mm, okay then she was like marika you had sex and i was just watching she like you want to know the truth or you want me to tell you what you want to hear uh i didn't say that i was just <laughs> you know i was thinking that and i think i said no what was and then she asked me again but she didn't pause like she asked me and then immediately started talking about what if you get pregnant what if you get std you know about sex and you know you shouldn't be having sex so young and this and that and I was just there, so I'm listening, listen, listen. Now, a lot of people do not know that just before Mateo, I was, like, at a very rebellious stage in my life. And I was very nonchalant, very disrespectful to my mother, to my people on the whole. And I was just terrible. So she's talking to me, and it was like, she was talking to her wall, because I just say, like, and I was listening, eh? And I'm not even gonna say that, you know, I wasn't listening. I was listening, but not to, like, keep the information in my head. Like, I was just listening because I should have been, you know? And she was just talking. She went on and on and on and on. And literally, I was just like this. like i'm not even kidding and she got to a point where you know she 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 was crying and she it got really bad and she even when she was crying i was just there like this and eventually like close to the end of the conversation she was telling me not even the conversation the lecture she was telling me that you know i'm still a baby and these different things and how she trying and this and that and 
when i say that i was at a very rebellious state i mean that shit like mm -mm. i used to get in trouble in school almost every other week or every week i in detention or something i was sneaking around i asked my, my father to change my, my number get a new sim card hey it was so many different things pile up pile up pile up pile up pile up and that was all i was in like the april may month and then the beginning of june i went and i did that so i went and do the nasties and you know after the conversation like she hugged me and that's when i actually broke down i was crying and she was there and she hugged me and stuff and we made up and i guess i started to respect her more because i mean even though my mother was always in my corner she was the trying parent she, like she did everything for me i there was nothing that i wanted or needed that i didn't have and i still put my father in front of her and I, I don't know why i don't know i was just always like a daddy's girl so it didn't matter what she did he was always first you know and then it wasn't until i got pregnant it was like a reality check um a wake up call that whoops your mother is the only one here not your father not your best friend not all the people that you consider close friends or your people like it was like um and during my pregnancy is when my mother and i became like this we were like this we were inseparable and that's why i always say that god knew i needed mateo because if it wasn't for mateo i feel like right after i had sex with that person i would have done it again and again i might uh, do some nonsense in school might uh, get suspended might uh, do something and it's like i needed to be slowed down you know like i really 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 needed it and so i i thank god for my mother every single day because without her and her guidance hmm i don't i don't know now nah. i don't know at all but yeah she basically just fine out because i was blabbing my mouth on the phone and i couldn't shut the hell up but people feel because you know my mother gave me the opportunity to choose whether you know i want to keep my baby or terminate the pregnancy or my mother knew that i had sex at 15 and she was involved in all these different things people thought that you know we were very close but we didn't become close until mateo to be honest so yeah and i you know people that say couldn't be my mother like if i get pregnant she go disown me or she go um cough me down or something yeah you think i wasn't thinking that the night i found out that i was pregnant i expected her to walk out of that room and slap the shit out of me and she didn't do that she really didn't and i just realized that her parenting style is different from the typical caribbean parent and it worked for me it worked for my sister and i feel like i turned out great yes i got pregnant at 15 but there was nothing that she could do to prevent that so yeah what i want to say to parents though is educate your children on sex on safe sex on birth control methods um educate them make sure they have the knowledge make sure they have access to the condoms the birth control pills the plan b's all these different things because you're saying use a condom but where we getting it from we're supposed to go in the pharmacy by the makume pharmacist and ask for a, bo a box of condoms mm, sounds a bit ghetto to me because then the pharmacist gonna be watching you up and down like what are you do with condoms miss ma'am 
would you prefer if I was pregnant and I came for prenatal vitamins? Like, these pharmacists don't even make it easy for you. You know, you're trying to have safe sex is a problem. You're pregnant is a problem. You have an abortion is a problem. Like, how can you play society? You can't. That and that's just it. You can't. So as parents have these things accessible is not to encourage them to have sex. Giving your son or your daughter a pack of condoms is not saying go, go and have sex. It's just leaving it there. It don't even have to be in their room. It could just be in the house somewhere where they know it is. So that in the case where they happen to have sex or they feel like they are ready because you're not gonna have your eyes on your child 24 7 so the day that they come home from school and you're not home and they're with a boy or they're with a girl and they're like okay one thing leads to next and they're ready to do that and they say oh shucks mommy tell me to use a condom in that moment where they're supposed to get it? if it's not in the house where they're supposed to get it so that's what i say get it have it in your house don't like say okay here's a condom go have sex it's not like that like just have it there for in case they decide to have sex and caribbean people just make sex seem like a bad thing it really isn't it's not at all and it's like if you're telling me kalaloo don't taste good you shouldn't eat that you shouldn't eat that at all but how I supposed to know if it do taste good if I never taste it? Hmm? How? Like, they do not teach safe sex and educate you on sex. They practice abstinence. They tell you, don't have sex. They shame you for having sex. And it shouldn't be like that. Because whether you teach them or not, they're going to have sex. And it's better for them to learn from you than to find out on their own because when they learn on their own they're going to experiment and that is how they get pregnant and have abortions that you don't even know about or they hide their pregnancy or they run away or they get some std and then they spread it all over like come on come on and again back to that um you don't know if it tastes bad if you never taste it some people like me i had sex the first time and i didn't like it i thought sex was overrated i mean i didn't say that out loud i was like yeah you know with the girls and i'm like mm -hmm, i do the do but in my head i didn't like it i really didn't i didn't understand it and i feel like that is because i didn't know about it i didn't know much about it i didn't know what i like i didn't know you know it was just penis vagina sex it wasn't like you know and i was 15 again i was 15 and we have this stigma against masturbation with girls because with boys even in secondary school you're talking you're talking to boys and they're talking about how much time they does do it a week and they does just laugh it off play it off but when girls say that they're doing that is a problem it's like you just masturbate like yes you have a problem you don't know what yours look like how you okay with letting somebody else touch you when you don't even touch you hmm? so yeah it's like you can't know how to do the nasties if you don't even know what you like and what you don't like you know so yeah explore your own body figure out what you want what you like all these different things don't rush into having sex if you don't even know about it you know what i mean so yeah and disclaimer i'm not encouraging sex among teens i am really not and in terms of Matteo and me as a mother teaching and educating them about sex, I feel like you should teach your child not every single thing, but you should expose them to that topic from secondary school. 
because when they go to secondary school they are exposed themselves to conversations to activities to all these different things related to sex and it's like if they don't know they would figure it out on their own so Mateo I don't want him to be in the same position that me and his dad was in at all I don't want him to put any growth through that that not happening because the generational curse stops at me and he it will not be repeated with my son I say that and I mean it it will not be repeated with my son he would have all the knowledge and he would have access to everything that he needs he would be prepared for the day that he is ready to do that and every other day after that so yeah i hope you'll enjoy this story time this is the last video for the year this is my fifth video maybe six i can't remember we are almost at 10k i really can't believe that at all but i really just want to thank you all so much i didn't expect my channel to blow up so quickly i thought you know it would take at least three months to get to where i'm at but i'm here in less than one month so i am truly grateful and i love you all so much i love you all and to the people that dm me they message me on snap like everybody that's sending love i love you all and i thank you so much for the, the kind comments and the support and tune in for my next video next year will be bigger and better and i took your advice so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do story times for the month and uh, at one random day in the month we would have a surprise video it could be a q a uh shoot or drink or never have i ever like you could just get the updates on my instagram i would just randomly post on like a tuesday give me questions for a q a and well you would know that the video coming on friday so yes so we would do a surprise video once a month every month and depending on you know how the growth is maybe i'll slip in a little twice a month but yes i'm really excited for this journey and i thank you so much once again so yeah thank you bye